Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Ben Bodie. Um, I'm the Pratt Miller Corvette race team aerodynamics lead. GT3 Aero compared to a production Corvette Z06, if you line them up next to each other, uh, is it obscenely obvious that it's a different car? And if so, how much of the surface from one to the next have you played with uh, compared to the production car? Yeah, that's another good question. So, you know, visually they're they're quite similar, and and that's the whole intent, right? Is um, we want the car to represent uh, the street counterpart. In my eyes, they're entirely different vehicles. Um, we have regulations, a long list of regulations that limit what we can and can't change, and by how much you can change things. Mm -hmm. So the intent of those regulations is to keep things based very much on the production car. However, there's a lot of room um, to make big aerodynamic changes. So although the changes might be fairly small visually, the aerodynamic impact is uh, significant. So um, the only surfaces that are unchanged on the car are the greenhouse and the doors. Uh, we've changed essentially everything else. Wow. Um, the most effective changes, of course, are on the underbody and the, the large rear wing out back. Um, so the underbody is where a lot of the magic happens. That's where it's been significant amount of our time but that's not to say that the top body isn't interesting as well one of the new um differences in gt3 compared to the car you see racing on track is you're allowed more uh venting of the front and rear fenders and you see that in a lot of prototype cars and you see that um, just in general throughout racing what that does is it depressurizes the wheel wells the wheel wells naturally create lift um, so by depressurizing the wheel wells, you generate more downforce. And um, so it's no secret, there's been plenty of pictures online so far. The, the GT3 car has a huge air dam in it, uh, in, on the front. Is that, uh, is it a combination of cooling and does it also provide suction or is it purely just cooling? Um, yeah, that's, it's actually mostly about the front downforce. So. Okay. Um, the cooling impact, of course, we're studying all the time. So um, whether we're testing in CFD or the wind tunnel, we're constantly monitoring the balance between being able to cool the car and hit our downforce drag and uh, car characteristic targets that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, however, that particular one, um, cooling isn't impacted too much. So it's, it's mostly a question of how we're managing the air under the car. Yep. What's interesting about that, and you see the difference in that uh, front splitter between the C8R and the GT3, is of course, by changing the front splitter, you see a change in front downforce. But part of what we're actually managing is the flow that goes all the way to the rear diffuser and balancing the rear downforce. So I think that's one of the things that's so interesting about aerodynamics is everything's very interactive you can't just change one part of the car and get one parameter to change um, usually you change one small thing and you see four changes on the output variable so um, we can make a change all the way at the front of the car and see change uh, performance changes at the back yeah and in your opinion is aerodynamics more art or science uh, i think that's what i like about it so much is i think there's such an art aspect to it um, I, I don't think that it can be sent to an optimizer and all cars would be shaped the same. Um, I, I think that there's still still an important human element to it. And if any aerodynamicist says they know exactly what they're doing, I think they're lying. <laughs>